Hey there. So today I wanted to show how to do a um, event source store or a store where you can s persist events. It can also be done on a SQL server, SQL server, or um, there are some dedicated databases like event store DB. But I wanted to show it um, how you can implement it yourself because that's that's how I started and um, I think it makes sense if you know what you're doing. So I'm here now at the account repository and I'm um, retrieving the list of events from the aggregate and now what I want to do is I want to usually would get the store from uh, from the constructor uh, per dependency injection and it should be a singleton it's very important you should not use multiple stores and here I would want to add these events to the store so I would some say some uh, write something like add events and I would just pass this list and I would also need the account ID so the ID of the um, uh, aggregate route. So I can create now the method here. And it has a list of events. Since I don't want it to know the exact type, I'm just going to do it generic, just like this. And uh, yes. And here it doesn't have to be a list, it can be a collection could also be an enumerable. So what I'm going to do here is the following. Um, what I want to do is that I want to uh, iterate through these events and I'm going to add some uh, metadata on them. And to do that I'm going to do something called a start event. And this is going to have some more properties. For instance, usually we would want to have some kind of sequence number. So we can have a uh, we can have a definite uh, um, um, a fixed sequence. This can be very important. So what I'm going to do here is just to keep a sequence number and this one is going to start at null, so I don't need to add it. And for each event that is going to be persisted, I'm going to increment it. After that, I maybe I, uh, I, I want the version. Well, usually you would only want the version if you want to um, have some kind of concurrency, uh, optimistic concurrency, for instance. I also want to save the aggregate ID, persist the aggregate ID, so that I know, so that I can know which. Uh, and here, for instance, it's called the count ID, so I'm going to call it the aggregate ID, so that I know which instance should be loaded. And I also need the event data. So this event data is just the actual event event that comes from here. So in order to persist this, I will need to persist it somehow because this event data is going to be a string. And in this case, I want to use a JSON converter. Actually, I wanted to use the one from from Newton, Newtonsoft. I'm going to install it here quickly because this handles the types. Just in convert. Yes. So can do the type handling. Um, I'm going to serialize the object. And here I'm just going to write the event. And I'm going to add a new serializer settings and just say that it should handle 
type name handling all so then I don't have I don't need to give the, the type of the event now I just need to create this third event type and it will have the sequence number so I have ordering and what's the problem so here are global unique identifier and uh, I did just have to serialize data so this is the minimal version and after doing this so if I would in this case I'm not using uh, entity framework so I'm just going to keep a a private list of uh, st stored events so just like this um, and in the end I'm going to add it here I could also add the range but this will do it um, and if I come back to the repository the it should be like this so I'm adding the events to the event store and afterwards I'm committing them from the um, in the aggregate so that they are removed from the from the aggregate aggregate so if I save it again it doesn't think that I need to the same events have to be saved again so this is how I persist the events generated in the aggregate and um, I also need to be able to load it, load them. So I also need to do something like store load events. And what I'm going to pass here is just the idea of the aggregate. In this case, I'm going to do it generic too. I'm just going to give a, li a list and I can say where T is a class and it should be instantiable. Uh, it should have a uh, empty constructor. So I'm just going to the events, and I'm going to say I want it where the event as the aggregate ID is the same as the ID, and then I'll have to deserialize them. So I'm going to say that um, I'm going to use again JSON convert this here realize object and here just receives the event the event and I will also need to do exactly the same that I did here. So I can just do the settings here private uh, JSON settings serializer settings things this can be done so that the serialization is handled by the Newton soft so I just write settings here and I also have to write them here and after this I just do to list and now I can see here that it says it cannot deserialize to this type so also need to do this and what is the problem here JSON serializer settings ah yes um, actually I need to do here event data so by doing this it's just deserializing them and converting them to T which means that in the account repository repository I'll just have to say that they are of type event uh, not this event of this one right side events is it so like this uh, actually a collection of them uh, 
Okay, so it needs to have a empty constructor. Well, that was the requirement I gave in. Is it public? Yes. Oh, it's abstract. That's why it doesn't work. So it's not abstract anymore. So now it can be deserialized and um, on the read rate it's going to be through dynamic it's going to to be able to um, check the real instance of the event so and um, uh, also what I wanted to show is that um, I'm persisting this here at the moment well the sequence number it can just be an identity column if you are using a SQL, uh, SQL server and this list of stored events, it could just be a, a table in the database. And this is just the minimum to get started. So if you would want to have some kind of concurrent concurrency exception, uh, concurrency uh, handling, um, you could also add a version number so that you also have a version and for each um, event belonging to this aggregate the version would increase i can also show it can be done quite simply by adding a dictionary here in which the version is stored so i have can call it versions like this and then what I would want to do is to say that um, I can just say here the version is like minus one because the first one will be zero so I'm going to go to the versions and I'm going to try to get the value and uh, the version and after doing this I'm just going to say a version plus plus so that the version is incremented and uh, it is important in, in the end to say that versions dot um, well actually here if it contains key and try and um here I can just say if it contains key the aggregate ID then I'm just going to say versions of aggregate ID is now equals to the last version number otherwise I'm going to insert it so that the next time I have to so I have the integer here so it would be um, it would be possible after doing this uh, to check to use optimistic concurrency for instance if you say that uh, expected expected version you can send it from the outside and say that you are expecting the version 4 for instance and after you get the version you can say here if the expected version is not the same as the version that you got it you can just throw throw a new well I don't have it here but optimistic optimistic well you know how it <laughs> how it continues and just throwing an exception here so and that's and also to be able to do this on um, with SQL Server or with Entity Framework, it would be quite simple. So I'm not going to show it here. So if you like the video, if you have some questions, feel free to leave me a comment. And I hope this helps. That's it for today. Bye.